As a Roblox game, Tower Defense Simulator has had a far more storied history than most. The game's simple progression system with small units or towers and strategical events or game modes has been affected by a number of delays, failures, innovations, and overall massive success. Yet in the game's history there is never a lower point than the post-Halloween 2020 era, as a complete drought of content would appear to leave the game all but abandoned, as months and months and months would roll by with nothing. Yet, when an update was eventually released, it would be one of the game's biggest, and propel TDS to even further success. But how did all this happen? How did a winter event end up being next year's summer event? It all starts on November 1st, 2020. As with many other games, TDS typically created special events for holidays, and on the last day of October, the second annual Halloween event had been released, where the community was generally pretty happy, or at least I liked it. It was a quality update, especially compared to the previously disastrous hardcore live event, and it paved the way for a lot of great features to come later, introducing the battle pass system, which doesn't sound good, but it was free to play and was actually a lot better than the previous crit mechanics, and a new game mode with some fun gimmicks, plus a total of 20 Halloween items to collect. Personally, I 100% this event, or at least I thought I did. I actually realized I bought some of the ranks, so yeah. It looked to be a worthy predecessor to the anticipated Christmas event, for which people knew there was still a while to wait. And as November passed, the developers started making preparations. Two older event towers were re-released as game passes, which is actually how I got both Archer and Slasher, and the second half of the Halloween update was released, coming with the rest of the promised skins and some bug fixes. Overall, a good month, but one that looked as if it was going to be overshadowed by December, and the massive winter update. On the 8th, the developers conducted some public testing sessions for the new matchmaking system, an innovative feature that was going to be an integral part of the planned update. Rather than creating teams manually, you could simply click a button, and automatically be paired with teammates around your skill level. Through this testing, a problem became apparent though, namely some fairly severe lag, but the developers were optimistic about the fix, and after the testing finished, they would continue to work on it. On December 19th, a Roblox game badge for the winter event is uploaded, confirming the seasonal event will be happening, with the only question being, when? Christmas was, after all, less than a week away. As the month progressed, other Roblox games released their winter events, but for TDS, nothing happened. December 25th, and no update. There was a progress report from Razutex though, as well as mentioning the numerous struggles they faced throughout the year, which understandably led them to release less content than they had hoped for. As cliche of a saying as it is, the developers are human but he stated they were looking to do much better in the new year. This meant the winter update would be pushed back, but by how much? No one really knew at the time. Additionally, there's one little line in here that sticks out in retrospect, as near the end of the post, Rasutex stated the awaited Halloween Tower was finally finished. Basically, this was the Toxic Gunner, and it was meant to be released with the November 1st update, but had to be delayed. And I'll come back to the importance of this later, since in the meantime, it's now January, a pretty quiet month as developers continue work. Some UGC items were released, people didn't really like that, and some community guidelines are fixed up, but there's no major updates on the winter event. Leading into February, the developers hired modelers to create more maps and skins, and teasers began to be posted, but as I've talked about before, a lot of these never ended up releasing. By far the most notable event this month was TDS's second ever nomination for the Bloxies Award, Roblox's own official accolade presentation. They had been nominated and lost the previous year, but after receiving vouchers from Kaneko Kitten, Flamingo, and others, the prospects were looking hopeful, but everyone would have to wait a bit longer to see the results. It wasn't until the end of the month where Razutex would again speak up. The lobby, the place in the game where you would join individual rounds, still had the same Halloween theming and the Halloween music after four months. And now, it was to be finally replaced with a new summer lobby, and it was also stated that the winter event theming would shift slightly, since, you know, Christmas had already passed at this point. He closed by saying they are still working hard on the game, and this was honestly a good response, citing the community's concerns and promising improvements, except there was a problem. This planned smaller update never got released. This is where the situation starts to get really desolate. I want to compare this to a somewhat similar, more recent situation. For the first 5 months of early 2023, there was no major event, as it was a typical low point in the year for the game. Yet, instead of just working away at the next big event, TDS released many smaller updates, implementing finished pieces of content created by contractors, UI changes, re-releasing game passes, and reworking towers with the help of the balancers. These aren't huge, bombastic updates, but they satiate the community and keep the game feeling fresh, whereas in 2021, it seems 
seems like the developers decide to just put everything they had been working on into the winter event. I think the clearest indicator of this is that the Toxic Gunner, an already delayed tower, was held onto for months even when it was apparently already finished. It is understandable, it's a lot more exciting to make a single massive update rather than more consistent little patches. Additionally, it's essentially what TDS had become known for. The problem with that tactic is it means there's a Halloween lobby in March. I mean, Focus makes some good music, but over those months, just hearing the lobby theme loop over and over and over. I think the Paradoxum team's biggest pitfall has been the tendency to be overly optimistic. Frequently, teased features end up taking much longer to come out than initially expected, which might be why in more recent years there's been a lot less teasers and promotions. In early 2021, I think just pushing this one single update with the refreshed lobby and maybe a few maps or skins thrown in, maybe even the event tower, it would have done a lot to restore the community's faith in the game. But this didn't happen. For whatever reason, the week came and went and the Halloween lobby stayed. Following this, more teasers came out. The developers' tweets started to be received with more and more toxicity. The TDS community has a definite ugly side, and it reared its head during this time. The vast majority of the anger was just very much unneeded, but they were kinda right about one thing. The length of time between updates was starting to get pretty depressing, as it had now been over 100 days since the game had been touched. Yet, promotional images were still coming out, and as March neared its end, it was time for the Bloxies. TDS had been nominated the previous year for its lobby and didn't win, but this time it was a new category, Game Trailer. At the time, I felt the competition was a lot weaker, but still, no one really knew what would happen. On March 27th, Below Natural, Rizutex, and Profine would appear on stream with John to watch the awards. And for a brief moment, the community was united, mostly united, as everyone joined the interactive awards game and waited to see the winner. <laughs> and TDS actually won, giving the community a legitimate cause to celebrate for the first time in months. A special skin for the Commander Tower was promised, and to end the stream, the developers invited viewers to join the game. Little fun fact here, I actually wriggled my way in there. This was two years ago, so I had a slightly different Roblox avatar, but I still got this screenshot and I hit the floss. This win was a high point in what had been a pretty negative stretch of time for the game, and it was nice to see TDS take a W this massive. And then an Among Us event came out. I mean, at this point, they're just on a hot streak. April Fools was the first time the game had been touched in 2021 to add an imposter, sus. I got the joke badge with my friend, and that was pretty much it. <laughs> this is the only screenshot that I have. As the Bloxy skin was promised for, you guessed it, the winter update, which was now looking to be the spring update, as Easter passed with no changes to the game, along with the rest of April itself. There were more maps and skins shown off, but not a whole lot else. Until May. At this point, it's been half a year, still with the Halloween lobby, still with no update. But on the 3rd of the month, a release date is finally announced as May 6th. But then there's that saying where it's like, the closer you are to your home, the more likely you are to have an accident or something. Well, the update got delayed. Not significantly though, just by a day. Still enough to set off the community. But to make it up, the developers ended up doing a live stream. A little aside here, it's kind of weird that in this stream, done one day before the update, you can see a marginally different version of the user interface that never released. It's just like such a TDS thing. It was actually really interesting to hear background info about the development from Razutex himself, though there were a few goofs, like this Milton bug, or the misspelling of precise. But still, it was clear that this update was generally very polished, and would not be another hardcore. Things looked solid heading into May 7th, and the update would finally be released after 189 days. The question on everyone's mind, was it worth the wait? This update included a massive four lane map for the Frost Invasion event and the Frost Spirit boss with a million health. Two new towers were released, the Halloween themed Toxic Gunner and the new Frost themed Sledger. The new lobby, maps, and skins provide a nice cosmetic overhaul. There was also the Metaverse quest, which was pretty dumb. You had like this big AJ Striker boss or something. I made a great tutorial video for this back in the day. <laughs> the update averaged around 50,000 daily players in the following days, and it revitalized the community in a major way. I don't know if the content itself was intrinsically worth the time, but what I think elevates it is actually that weight. As dispiriting as those months of nothing were, it also helped build an excitement that's hard to match otherwise. I mean in game development half a year is nothing, but in Roblox that's like 10 years, you know? It gave the update a very special feeling that I don't think many other Roblox games could match. On a platform where games get update after update after update, this felt more important. And maybe that moment or feeling is better than any update could have been. I don't know, maybe that's dumb. After this update, a lot more smaller patches and new features were pushed, and TDS hit a number of milestones. They got their Bloxy Award, celebrated the game's two-year anniversary, and hit a billion total visits. 
all as a team worked on the next big event, and the Frost Invasion would end... Oh boy. It would overtake the Halloween event as the longest ever, stretching until December for a total of 210 days, except with some actual smaller updates in between, so the wait wasn't nearly as bad, and leading into the Solar Eclipse event, which was kind of a combination of everything about the style, an extremely long wait for an insane payout. The Solar Eclipse event would earn the game another Bloxy nomination and remains the biggest and most successful update in the game's history, but that's a story for another day. Thanks to everyone here for gameplay and other footage, in particular thanks to Maelstrom for the gameplay of testing sessions, and to Stwoom for archiving the Paradoxum game stream. Please consider dropping a like or subscribing as I put a ton of time into this video. As of today, it's been two years since the Frost Invasion event, and although many more updates have come out since, I don't know if any felt more special than the Frost Invasion. Thank you for watching. I'm just glad our community has enjoyed the five month long Halloween update. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nightmare before Christmas. So <laughs>